Oh, I didn't see you there. Sorry, I was looking at my beautiful Blu-ray of Sunset Boulevard. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out Sunset Boulevard. This is the 1950 movie. I think that it is in black and white, and that's kind of everything that I know about it. I know that this is supposed to be a classic film, um, but I don't know anything. I never have had like too much interest in watching it but I thought you know what I've been watching a lot of like Hitchcock movies and some other classic movies why not try out Sunset Boulevard because I've heard it's supposed to be very good and that's kind of why I'm watching it because I heard it was supposed to be pretty good and before we get into this reaction let me do the lighting so let me turn on the light and we can decide what color it should be boop Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so I think this movie is black and white, or at least the thumbnail is black and white for this movie, so the lighting may not actually matter for the video. But for me, what I want to watch this movie on, I'm going to make like make it like a, a yellow, because sunsets and sun, yellow, I think yellow is a pretty good color, like a yellowy orange type of color. And before we get into this reaction, if you'd like to check out more of my videos, you can head over to my Patreon. I have uncut reactions to many of the movies I watch on YouTube, as well as early access reactions to my movies that come out one week early. There are also two exclusive Patreon movies a month that you guys on Patreon get to choose, so thank you so, so much if you check it out. Now let's get back to the video. All right, let's just drive up the boulevard while watching a sunset, and let's watch this movie. That was very elaborate. Let's just watch this. I hope you enjoy my reaction to Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> Interesting that the Paramount logo is uh, transparent behind it. It's about five o'clock in the morning. That's the Homicide Squad, complete with detectives and newspaper men. This is a murder mystery? Before those Hollywood columnists get their hands on it, maybe you'd like to hear the facts. Yeah, I would. Let's, let's hear them. See, the body of a young man was found floating in the pool of her mansion, with two shots in his back and one in his stomach. Ooh. Oh, well, in the end, he got himself a pool. Only the price turned out to be a little high. <laughs> Already some good lines in this movie. Where are the keys? Why should I give you the keys? Because the companies play ball with you long enough. Because you're three payments behind. Oh my gosh. The life of a writer. The car better be back here by noon tomorrow. There's going to be fireworks. You say the cutest thing. Huh. <laughs> I like Joseph. I needed it real quick or I'd lose my car. It wasn't in Palm Springs. That was such a good reveal. My agent told me it was dead as a doornail. But I knew a big shot over there who'd always like me. And the time had come to take a little advantage of it. It's such an interesting movie. So much voiceover. And there's another thing. It's pretty simple to shoot. Lots of outdoor stuff. I bet you could make the whole thing for under a million. <clears throat> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's just a rehash of something that wasn't very good to begin with. I'm sure you'll be glad to meet Mr. Gillis. He wrote it. Oh my gosh. She's like awkward. My name is Schaefer. Betty Schaefer. Betty and Joseph. Right now, I wish I could crawl in a hole and pull it in after me. <laughs> I knew it. Oh my god, that's so good. Kids, just a story won't do. You'd have turned down Gone with the Wind. No, that was me. I said, who wants to see a Civil War picture? <laughs> biggest mistake of his life. Absolute biggest mistake. Team, put in a few numbers. Might make a cute musical. It happened in the bullpen. The story of a woman. Are you trying to be funny? Because I'm all out of laughs. <laughs> this man is not having it. A talent like yours gets into that Macambo Romanoff rut, you're through. Oh, forget Romanoffs. It's a car I'm talking about. If I lose my car, it's like having my legs cut off. Greatest thing that could happen to you. Now you'll have What? Getting your legs cut off? As I drove back towards town, I took inventory of my prospects. They now added up to exactly zero. <laughs> That's some hard math. Why don't you go out and take a crack at Hollywood? Maybe you think that you could make... Uh-oh. Oh, boy. The music is really good in this movie so far. The music's actually phenomenal. There was I really like his outfit as well, you know? I like how it's too big for him, and so that kind of insinuates that he doesn't have that much money. You there! Why are you so late? Who? What is happening? 
Who are you? I just put my car in the garage. I had a blowout. I thought maybe this... Go on in. Look, maybe I better take my car and get it off. Wipe your feet. Yeah, punk. Wipe your feet. <laughs> need any help with the coffin call me with the what now if I heard that I would be running back down the stairs you always like fires and poking at them with a stick there's so many random things in this room what the heck bright flaming red let's make it gay what there's a monkey on the bed get out Sorry. I'm sorry you lost your friend. And I don't think red is the right color. Oh, so true. Agreed. You're Norma Desmond. Used to be in silent pictures. Used to be big. I am big. Well. It's the picture that got small. Oh, wait. That's such a sexy line. What the heck? That is such a sexy line. Intimate, isn't it? What the heck kind of house is this? There's so many picture frames. I hate that word. It's a return. A return to the millions of people who've never forgiven me for deserting the screen. <laughs> I love her confidence. And she'd mention something to drink. Why not? Sometimes it's interesting to see just how bad bad writing can be. See, this script would never actually get made, though, because it's not formatted correctly. You need to format it correctly before anyone will even look at it. Miss Holder, I could sense her eyes on me from behind those dark glasses, defying me not to like what I read. Or maybe begging me in her own proud way. Is this movie the movie that Joseph makes at the end of the movie, maybe? It was all done with great dignity. He must have been a very important chimp. The great grandson of King Kong, maybe. <laughs> what a what a disappointment if that's the great grandson of King Kong. What it needs is uh, maybe a little more dialogue. What for? I'm sending I want with my eyes. Well, it's certainly. Oh, true. Good actors can't say a lot with their eyes. I have to have somebody I could trust. When were you born? I mean, what sign of the zodiac? I don't know. Oh my God, no! Oh my God. There's something wrong with your car, you said sure is why shouldn't you stay here look i'll come back early tomorrow nonsense there's a room over the garage this is such a fascinating movie what the heck like the house is so creepy and so full of shadows and that woman is so eccentric but at the same time it's so interesting how did you know i was gonna stay this afternoon the bathroom is over there i put in some towels soap and a wait yeah what how did he know don't avoid the question, Max. Come to think of it, the whole place seemed to have been stricken with a kind of creeping paralysis. Yeah, you think? You just noticing that? Was her life really as empty as that? What if the monkey is her child? Big brain over here. It was all <laughs> very queer. But queer things were yet to come. Oh, I'm expecting so many weird things. This movie has taken so many turns that I didn't think it was ever going to take. What was going on? The music is so good. Oh, you go, organ man. What is going on? What's the matter? Is there anything missing? Who said you could? Who asked you to? I did. I don't know why you should be so upset. All of the pictures around her, it's actually insane. I'll take care of that. It's all taken care of. It's all paid for. Now you have to stay here a bit. One of those wild hallucinations of hers. And what made it even tougher was that she was around all the time. Hovering over me. Afraid I'd do injury uh, to that precious brain child. That is, uh, that's horrible. That's like when I'm trying to coach kids or something. Like swimming and the parents are standing right at the edge of the pool like, go away. Well, honestly, it's a little too much of you. They don't want you in every scene. They don't? Then why do they still write me fan letters every day? Oh my god. She's so self-indulgent. I didn't argue with her. You don't yell at a sleepwalker. He may fall and break his neck. 
That Who's she sending those autographs to? Like, how many people still love her? Nights of a lost career. Playing crazy when it came to that one subject. Her celluloid self. Yeah, there we go. Max would haul up that enormous oil painting that had been presented to her by some Nevada Chamber of Commerce. And we'd see a movie. That actually is really cool. Like a secret TV. I would have that in my house. Say. The plain fact was she was afraid of that world outside. Afraid it would remind her that time had passed. Oh, I love it. I love the lines in this movie. And the, the voiceover works. Just becoming a fan. Excited about that actress up there on the screen. Dude, he, he is moving so far away from her. This is crazy. There is something enchanting about no dialogue, I'll be honest with you. Those imbeciles. Haven't they got any eyes? Have they forgotten what a star looks like? I'll show them. I'll be up there again, so help me. I love the lighting there. Look at the lighting. Look how dramatic that lighting is. Oh my god, that profile lighting. Ooh. I used to think of them as her waxworks. One diamond. One heart. Spade. Pass. These are all the, the actors that are kind of nobodies anymore. Are those the inspectors? It's his car, come on, just end the game for a second. Is it? Oh my god, I hate you. Get whacked in the face. She'd take me for rides in the hills above sunset. The whole thing was upholstered in leopard skin. Ah, Ew. Oh there. I don't need any clothes, and I certainly don't want you buying them for me. Why begrudge me a little fun? I just want you to look nice. And must you chew gum? What's wrong with chewing gum? What's wrong with chewing gum? Put it put it on her face. Just put the gum on her face. Of course it's a little more expensive. The camel's hair will do. <laughs> well, as long as the lady's paying for it, why not take the vacuuma? That's so true. That's so true. This guy has got a point. Like he's not wrong here. She had Max move me to the main house. I didn't much like the idea. It's almost as if she planned the rain intentionally. That's a scary bed. I will not lie, that's a scary bed. Uh, the husbands, I should say. Husbands? Been married three times. Oh, not at the same time, though. I thought, thought he was saying, like, she married, like, three guys at the same time. <laughs> that's useful. There are no locks anywhere in this house, sir. Why? And how have you not noticed that before? She got enough out of it. She's not forgotten. She still gets those fan letters. I wouldn't look too closely at the postmarks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet Max sends the fan letters. I was gonna say... And that bed like a gilded rowboat. The perfect setting for a silent movie queen. That is an insane looking bedroom. This is a great shot too. That sad, embarrassing revelation. It's just her. There's no one else coming, it's just you two? It's so lame, what a lame party. <laughs> Cute, come on, let's have a drink. Shouldn't we wait for the others? Max, champagne! There are no others, dude, come on! I gotta say, there is so much detail in every single shot, like... Every single shot, I feel like I could pause and just try and notice different things. Oh? Hold me tighter. Okay. No, why are you doing this? You're leading her on. An hour dragged by. 
Dragged. He used the word dragged. Has it ever occurred to you that I may have a life of my own? That there, there may be some girl that I'm crazy about? Who? Some par hop or... Oh, she's gonna kill that girl. What you're trying to say is you don't want me to love you. Say it. Say it. Oh, get whacked. You know, she was saying a lot with her eyes there. I've been watching her eyes a lot because she said that line. So I've been trying to see if they're actually going to do a lot with her eyes. And they have been. <laughs> Such an unsatisfying slam. There was bound to be a New Year's shindig going on in his apartment down in Las Papas. Writers without a job. Composers without a publisher. Okay, okay, happy new year, but let me in. It's so wet. Oh, you've been keeping that gorgeous face of yours. In a deep freeze. I almost reported you to the Bureau of Missing Persons. Fans, you all know Joe Gillis, the well-known screenwriter, uranium smuggler, and Black Dahlia son. Uranium smuggler. Close, but no cigar. Say, you're not really in the smuggling business these days, are you? Where's the bar? Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's so overdressed compared to everyone else. Everyone is very moderate. I also like he how he's like the darkest person in the room at the moment in terms of his attire. Hello, Mr. Gillis. Hello. Do you know each other? Let me help you. Betty Schaefer, Sheldrake's office? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, that's Betty. You've got a flashback there. <laughs> Is there some place we can talk? How about the rainbow room? I love that he's just not a good writer. Want me to start right away? Maybe there's some paper around. I'm serious. I've got a few ideas. And I got a few ideas of my own. One of them being this is New Year's Eve. How about living? You guys are getting a little close. Philip, you're mad. Thirsting for the coolness of your lips. <laughs> no. Put in all my old clothes, the ones I came with, and my typewriter. I'll have somebody pick them up. I have no time to do anything now. The doctor is here. Oh, I want to know who the doctor is. The razor from your room and she cut her wrists. Oh, what? 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 No, 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 no. She's up in the room. Oh. Uh, don't race upstairs. The musicians mustn't know what happened. The musicians mustn't know? Why? Maybe just because she wants to keep it private? What kind of a silly thing was that to do? To fall in love with you, that was the idiotic thing. Yeah, it was. I love this song that's playing right now. Oh, what a what an enchanting shot with the music. Happy New Year, darling. Oh, they're gonna kiss. Oh my days. Oh, some of the shots in this movie are actually golden. Somebody inquiring about a stray dog. Our number must be very similar to the number of the pound. Oh, Max is protecting her. Then deliver it to Mr. DeMille in person. Very good, madam. Sorry, just trying to crack my back there. This is the pool that the guy dies in. Is he the guy that dies? I don't remember what the face looked like. You're a darling. I'll get you some with your money. <laughs> they never even heard of you. Is that so? What's the wonderful news? Yeah, what Sheldrake is it? Sheldrake likes the angle about the teacher. Oh, good. I I've got 20 pages of notes and I've got a pretty good character for the man. Could you write in plenty of background action so they'll need an extra assistant director, huh? Oh, are So they'll need an extra assistant director. I'd kind of hope to get in on this deal. I don't want to be a reader all my life. I want to write. Yeah. If I crossed you up. You sure have. Yeah, you really crushed your dreams. But she can still do it by herself. Just take his own work, you know? Just do that. Yeah. No, nah. <laughs> I can still see myself in the line. Reprevost, Mabel Norman. Oh, it'd be so annoying to be with her. She's just talking about herself all the time. Talking about her past all the time. Audiences don't know somebody sits down and writes a picture. That is so they true. Think the actors make it up as they go along. That is honestly one of the truest statements I've ever heard in a movie. No one appreciates the writers of a film. It's important enough for Mr. DeMille to call me personally. The very idea of having some assistant call me. Say I'm busy and hang up. 
What the heck? What the heck is this attitude? Now DeMille can wait until I'm good and ready. About three days later, she was good and ready. <laughs> That's not that much longer. Open the gate. Sure, Miss Desmond. Come on, Mac. They can't drive on the lot without a pass. Miss Desmond can. Come on. See, she's just in tune with the old folk now. The new folk don't know her. She's kind of worn out of the new generation. Tell him without me, he wouldn't have any job. Because without me, there wouldn't be any Paramount Studio. You're right, Miss Desmond. Go on, Max. If I was him, I'd be like, what the heck is this rude person talking about? I'm going to whack her in the face. Norma Desmond's coming in to see Mr. DeMille. Norma Desmond? Wait a minute. Hey, welcome. I love it. How I had to go through three messengers to get to him. I hate to think where that puts me. I could be our father. Very sorry, Mr. DeMille. It must be about that awful script of hers. Awful? Ha! <laughs> the man cannot write a good script. Can do terrible things to the human spirit. Oh, yeah. This is really cool to see movie sets and movie like sound stages and stuff in the 1950s. I always love movies when you get to see behind the scenes of a movie in a movie, you know? Well, you can see I'm, I'm terribly busy. That's no excuse. You read the script, of course? Yes. I no, I didn't, it, because it was so bad. No, I'm in the middle of a rehearsal. Now, why don't you just sit up here? So Max was lying. Make yourself comfortable. Hmm? Or maybe Max wasn't even lying, she just assumed it was the assistant, but Gordon calls someone else. It's Hawkeye! Hello, Hawkeye! Let's <laughs> get a good look at you! Spotlight on her again, this is her dream come true. Her chauffeur drove it in on the lot the other day, it looks just right for the Crosby picture. We want to rent it for a couple of weeks. Oh, I see. We want to rent it for a couple of weeks, oh my god. Oh my god, she's not going to like this. I had no idea how much I missed it. We've missed you too, dear. We'll be working again, won't we, Chief? We'll make our greatest picture. No, that's the thing. No, it's horrible. Nothing would please me more, Norma, if, if it were possible. And remember, darling, I don't work before 10 in the morning and never after 4.30 in the afternoon. Oh, what a horrible person. All right. I just, like... I know Norma's all like naive and you know, it's like she just doesn't quite want to accept that the world has moved on from her and stuff, but at the same time I just want to slap her in the face uh, quite often. I remember my walls were covered with black patent leather. Ah, there she is! Go write your story. Just so you don't think I'm a complete swine, if there's anything in dark windows you can use, take it, it's all yours. Well, for heaven's sakes. Come on in, have a chair. It's no good. You should say, at least put my name on the credits. Couldn't we work in the evenings? Six o'clock in the morning. This next month, I'm completely at your disposal. Artie's out of town. What's Artie? Oh, he's out of town. In ships, of course. Are you kidding? Because I think it's good. Yeah, that so is what? good. Well, come on back. Let me show you where it fits in. So long. No, he wants to do it. He wants to do it. Yeah, throw the apple at him. It couldn't have gone better. It's practically set. Of course he has to finish this picture first. Mine will be his next. No, uh... She went through a merciless series of treatments. Like what? an athlete training for the Olympic Games, she counted every calorie. Went to bed every night at nine. She's becoming the most beautiful. Ready for those cameras that would never turn. Oh, that's so sad. This is actually really sad. I just came to say good night. I don't want you to see me. I'm not very attractive. It doesn't matter. You went out last night, didn't you, Joe? Oh, he's going out to help this, with the script? A nightmare, and I scream for you. you this is why he's gonna get shot. A little patient and a little kind. Oh, my, I haven't done anything. Of course you haven't. Ah, oh, I don't know why it's making me so uncomfortable, but it is. Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, but it's gonna be a really good script too. The first good script he's ever wrote. Mm. 
Mad about the boy. Middle-aged lady. Very foolish. Very generous. I'll say. This is solid gold. I get Solid gold. Oh my god. My father was head electrician here till he died. Mother still works in wardrobe. Second generation, huh? Third. Grandma did stunt work for Pearl White. I Whoa, that's so cool. They made more tests than they were crazy about my nose. Only they didn't like my acting. <laughs> That's so, that's so unfortunate. Why couldn't they have said, we don't like your nose and we don't like your acting? Come clean, Betty. At night you weep for those lost close-ups, those gala openings. Not once. What's wrong with being on the other side of the cameras? Yeah, yeah, there we go, there we go. Schaefer, I will now kiss that nose of you. If you please. Uh, don't kiss. She's engaged. At least two feet away from me. First time you see me coming any closer, I want you to take off a shoe and clunk me on the head with it. Ah, uh, that's so good. By way of Washington Square. I'm glad they didn't kiss. I'm glad. I'm, I'm also really glad that you said that. I feel like a lot of movies would just have them kiss, you know, and but I'm glad this one didn't. Getting herself ready for a picture. What happens when she finds out? She never will. That is my job. Oh. Oh, you made her a star. Yes, I directed all her early films. Oh, really? That's cool. Unendurable after she had left me. You see, I was her first husband. Oh, thought he was gonna say I love her, but first husband. Oh, Zooey, what the heck? That's a crazy twist. What if she burns the script? Oh, what if she burns the script? No, 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 no. By Joseph and Betty, Untitled Love Story. Betty, wake up. Why are you staring at me like that? Oh, what? I'm sorry. Yeah, Betty, you really just zoned out. It only cost two dollars to to get married there. It would kind of save us a honeymoon. Well, why don't you? We can finish the script by Thursday. She wants to get married somewhere else. Of course I love him. I always will. With him anymore, that's all. Ooh, what happened? Joseph. You did? Oh, you did. Oh, they're making out, buddy. They're making out. Betty Schaefer engaged to Artie Green, as nice a guy as ever lived. And she was in love with me. Yeah, I feel bad for Artie. Maybe I'd never have to. Maybe I could get away with it. Get away from Norma. Maybe I could wipe the whole nasty mess right out of- Oh no, I feel like Norma will track you down. Miss Gladstone, 9281. May I speak to Miss Betty Schaefer? She must be home by now. Oh my god. Oh, oh, this is so scary. Norma is so scary. I'm trying to do you a favor. I'm trying to spare you a great deal of misery. Oh my god, that shot. Or better yet, why don't you come out and see for yourself? The address is 10,086 Sunset Boulevard. Oh, he slammed that phone down with such menace. In my hand. Look at my face. Look under my eyes. How can I go back to work if I'm wasting away under this torment? You're not gonna be working. Your script sucks. I bought myself a revolver. I did. I did. I stood oh, in front of that mirror, no. but I couldn't make myself do it. Oh no, she's gonna shoot him. <laughs> Say you don't hate me, Joe. <laughs> you should have asked where the revolver was, or you should ask where the revolver is. You still have time. You still have an opportunity to save yourself. Notice how the voiceover has kind of faded away, or it got less and less as the movie progressed. What are you gonna do, Joe? What oh my gosh, she's do? sleeping on the revolver. Oh, yeah, he's getting shot. This is an enormous place. Eight master bedrooms. A sunken tub in every bathroom. There's a bowling alley in the cellar. What? That's so cool. 
Look, sweetie, be practical. I've got a good deal here. A long-term contract with no options. I like it that way. Joe, what are you doing? I can't look at you anymore, Joe. How about looking for the exit? Oh my god. Oh my god. That I got goosebumps when he said that. That was that was rough. Oh my god. If I heard that, I would just have incinerated into little flakes or something. Oh my god. When you and Artie get back, if the two of you ever feel like taking a swim. You're gonna be taking a swim soon, Joe. Why did he get so cold? Why did he get so absolutely cold? I thought he was in love with her. Ugh. 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 I love how she's framed in between the bars, you know? Ugh. Thank you, Joe. Joe. Don't worry, the doors don't lock. It's a little too dressy for sitting behind the copy desk in Dayton, Ohio. These are nothing. You can have anything you want. What is it you want? To get away from you. And you know I'm not afraid to die. It's between you and yourself. You think I made that up about the gun, don't you? Joe has some actually good lines. Oh no, you're gonna get shot. But hundreds of thousands of people will care. Oh, wake up, Norma. You'd be killing yourself to an empty house. The audience left yeah. 20 years ago. What about DeMille? He was trying to spare your feelings. The studio only wanted to rent your car. Wanted what? DeMille didn't have the heart to tell you. None of us has had the heart. Oh, Max is gonna shoot you, dude. I get letters every day. You tell her, Max. Come on, do her that favor. <laughs> this is so good. This is so suspenseful. Uh, That's what makes one a star. I would have run out of there. Like, you better be sprinting right now, Joe. Joe! Joe. She's aiming, she's aiming. Joe! Max, you better, I don't even know what you're going to do, but you better do something. Stars are ageless, aren't they? Oh, she's actually, she actually is terrifying me. Like, top 10 terrifying people of all time, Norma is number one. Aging actress, yesterday's glamour queen. So the voiceover is like his ghost talking or something, like, am I supposed to be thinking too hard about this? Was it a sudden quarrel? Had you ever had any trouble between you before? If it was a quarrel, how come this gun was right- Oh, what's she doing? Calm down, Norma. Did you catch him trying to steal something? Or find he had stolen something? The newsreel men are here with the cameras. Tell them to go fly a kite. They the cameras, she says? The cameras have arrived. They have. Tell Mr. DeMille I'll be on the set at once. What is this? Max is like, just go with it. She's crazy. Okay. Oh, oh, hold on. Hold on. I love the way she holds her face, you know? Like her eyes like so wide, her face always tilted a little bit up. It's just like uncanny. So they were turning after all. Those cameras. Life, which can be strangely merciful. Just us. And the cameras. And those wonderful people out there in the dark. Oh, uh, yeah, she's looking right at me. Ooh. Yeah, stop it. Stop looking at me, please.
And that was my reaction to Sunset Boulevard, the, t the well, I was going to say the 2000, the 1950, I was 50 years off, 1950. I think this was a noir drama sort of film starring Gloria Swanson, William Holden, yeah, William Holden, Eric Von Stroheim, and Nancy Olsen. I really, really enjoyed that movie. I had no idea what to expect going in. And then after the first five minutes, I thought this was going to be like a murder mystery because the guy was dead. And then we went back in time and it was like a retelling. It was a very, very interesting movie. The narration was really interesting. The narration was also really well done, especially because now, especially now in movies, if there's narration in a movie, it's usually seen as just a lazy screenwriting. So it's interesting that this movie is about screenwriters and then it has narration in it. That's just an interesting thing that I can that I can say from especially from studying newer films but yeah overall the tone of this movie the slow pacing of this movie to this really really climactic but sad finale the, the finale was so sad like nothing went right for anyone Betty had to go to Arizona after Joe was just like whatever like I don't like you anymore uh, Max you know his the star that he wanted to protect is no longer being he, she, he's never going to be able to protect her again because she's going to go to prison because she's insane uh joe he gets shot you know so that's it that's it for him i guess and then norma kills the man she gets her moment of stardom but it also is all crumbling for her so this movie ends on such a somber somber note i really liked the depiction of hollywood in this movie especially from the screenwriter perspective this was a movie based on screenwriters and kind of their struggle and i really liked the depiction of their screenwriter struggle in this film you know i liked that screen that Joe and Betty and stuff would make scripts and make scripts and make scripts and then they'd never come to fruition or they'd make scripts and they'd think it would be pretty good but then people want to change it into a musical or people only like six pages of the script you know and then you keep working you keep working and you don't get paid and I really liked the depiction of the struggle of a screenwriter in this and I also really enjoyed the lines or that, that little conversation between between some of the characters where they were like oh no one remembers the screenwriters no one really knows that screenwriters are making the movie are writing the movie they just think that actors are making it up on the spot and that's something that I find really interesting and something that you can really pick up on on just casual conversation with the movie you know you go to a movie and you you watch the movie and go wow the director did a really good job with this movie which is true or you say like oh the story of this movie was so good the director did a great job or the actors did a great job there is no one no one ever mentions the screenwriters no one ever goes oh the story of that movie was so good whoever wrote that movie did an amazing job. They always credit the director or the actors for the story of the movie when for the most part the story of the movie was made by completely different people and that's something that I find really interesting like just writers in general not just for movies but writers in general usually don't get the credit that they deserve and so I really liked the depiction of Hollywood in this film and I really liked kind of the way the movie went with that and then as well I also liked the stardom like someone losing stardom someone wanting to be in the spotlight someone so full of themselves someone who is like one of probably one of the most influential stars of all time and kind of what it's like I don't know years down the road when their trade maybe isn't the thing that they're good at anymore when people have kind of moved on other generations have moved on to other stars and I like that depiction as well of actors and stardom and stuff but I really really appreciated the screenwriting perspective because screenwriting and writing is something that I'm very interested in and so it was cool to see that aspect of the film. Getting into the scores of this movie before I get into the music. Uh, 8.4 out of 10 in IMDb and 98% run tomato. So I mean, seems like people really, really enjoy this movie. I don't really see why you wouldn't enjoy this movie. I think this movie has aged really, really well. The quality of the film looked phenomenal. It looked like a movie that could have been made today in terms of just the, the definition of the pixels, I guess. There are only a few moments where it's like, oh, this looks like it was made a little while ago. And of course, it's probably been restored or whatever, but it looked fantastic. And also just the story, the pacing of the story, Story. nothing about it really felt old it all still felt like it was useful to watch today it felt like the challenges that the people had back in the 1950s like screenwriters and stars are still challenges that can happen today albeit maybe less in terms of the stardom stuff because you have stars who are 70 80 years old and people don't really care as much about appearances of course movie studios still care about appearances they will cast like the most attractive women and the most attractive men to be like their stars but it's not like it's not uncommon anymore to get 
not the most attractive person to be your lead. So I feel like the stardom thing has definitely dwindled, but the writer thing, the struggle to be a writer, especially in a movie industry that's so flooded with scripts and so flooded with different things and is so adamant on just kind of doing kind of certain types of movies like Star Wars movies or Marvel movies. I totally forget what the word is to kind of group those movies together at the same time, but you kind of understand what I'm saying. So I think that struggle of a screenwriter is still there. Getting into the music now though, the music of this movie was phenomenal. I actually just read on Google right before this that it won an Academy Award for best music and I think it totally deserved it. The music in this, I wasn't expecting amazing music and I don't know, I don't usually go into older movies expecting amazing music just because usually music isn't as integrated as in movies nowadays just because it was a lot harder to to like record the audio and stuff but the music in this was absolutely phenomenal the score was was tense at times it was lively at times and sometimes there was no score and it made it even more tense i thought the sound in this movie in general was really well done i thought the camera work in this movie was really really impressive i'm pretty sure that this is a really famous director billy wilder is a really famous director i can see that someone posted somewhere that he directed double indemnity and then at the last weekend is a movie i've never heard of but double indemnity Indemnity, I'm just probably saying that wrong, is a movie that I'm planning to watch on the channel one day, and I'm really excited to then because if this guy directed it, Billy Wilder directed it, then I think he did an, a fantastic and fantastic job, a fantastic job. I think some of the camera movements were absolutely phenomenal. They really upped the tension, upped kind of the the impact of the shots. You know, the shot where she's on the phone and she's talking to Betty, she's like, ah, ha, ha, like he sucks, he's a bad person, you should see what he's like. Well, she doesn't say that, but you know what I'm saying, right? And then the door opens behind and it's like the impact of the music but it's also just the framing of the shot how she's in so much light but he's in shadow he's in the dark he opens the door he's almost like a villain for a moment you're kind of taken aback by how forceful he's opened the door and then he walks into the light to like kind of take the spotlight away from her and stuff you know it was a really really well frame shot. There were some mirror shots in this. There were a few mirror shots in this, which I thought were fantastic. One was very, very simple of just a mirror kind of center frame. And you see Norma walking up the stairs in the mirror. And then you see Joe come into the foreground and look at the mirror where Norma had just walked up. Like a very, very easy shot to do, but a very creative and a very effective shot just to kind of show what the characters are doing and thinking about in one shot instead of multiple shots. And I think also the shots and then the black and white feel of this movie as well really lent itself to the atmosphere this movie was going for and the tone it was very very mysterious and kind of uncanny I think is the word I'm going to describe but there were a lot of moments where I was feeling a little uncomfortable and that I think had a lot to do with Gloria Swanson's performance as Norma but also just like the feel of the house as well the feel of the outside world everything had a little bit of gloom to it and especially because it took place a lot in the house the house was super mysterious it it was too big for one person but had so much stuff in it and the guy walked in when Joe walks in first he's like intimate you know he says intimate and I thought that was really funny because to me it actually didn't feel intimate and of course he was saying it kind of jokingly because he's was probably looking at all of Norma's pictures but I thought it was also ironic that the house that was so big and so intimate with herself also felt so separated from herself I don't know it was really interesting and I thought in general the house set as well was so elaborate and so interesting like I wish I could just pause the movie and I guess I could do that now I, it's not like I just can't do that but I I, it would be cool to like pause the movie and I think whenever you pause a movie in the house I think there would be just so many things to look at you know so many pictures on the wall so many random things you go into Norma's room she has a boat for a bed that it looks like with like a little cherub guy that's not how you say the word you know that little like cupid looking man on top and I think there was just so much detail there and I think it went to the point where there was too much detail but it made sense for the movie you know it was almost like she's hoarding things she's hoarding kind of herself she's hoarding her past you know like the physical house the the messiness of the house and the hoarding nature of the house was kind of a representation of her mental state and how she was kind of hoarding the past, like hoarding those past moments in the spotlight for herself as well. I don't know, just really interesting things to think about. Like, I don't know if that's even true, if that's even something that happened, but I, that's how I'm kind of interpreting the messiness, and, but still kind of, I don't know, into herselfness. I There's a word for that that I just don't, that I just don't know off the top of my head, but you know what I'm trying to say 
say with that. Okay, getting into the cast of this movie now, I'll just talk about Nancy Olsen, Eric von Stroheim, William Holden, and Gloria Swanson. So Nancy Olsen as Betty, I really, really enjoyed her. I liked her little romantic character arc, but I think I enjoyed the screenwriting arc that she had more, how she was a reader, how she wanted to be a screenwriter, and then the ending for her character actually makes me super upset because I thought we were going to get something else with her at some point, like maybe Joe, I guess Joe was going to die, so I don't know why I thought Joe was maybe going to like make up with her or something, or maybe she'd find happiness, but no, she just leaves and she's crying and she's sad and she doesn't, she's not in love with the man in Arizona, Artie, anymore, but she's in love with Joe, but Joe broke her heart, so she leaves and that's the end of her character and it was really sad, but also kind of, it makes sense for this movie, like they're not going to do some crazy elaborate like, oh, I'm actually in love with you, it was all just a ploy sort of thing, like this movie was actually fairly realistic for the kind of uncanniness that it brought to the table as well and weirdness that it brought to the table, but I thought Betty was a really fun character and I thought her chemistry with Joe and the slow budding romance she has with him and like the flirting that they do throughout the whole movie I thought was really really cool and I thought Nancy Olsen did a great job. Eric von Stroheim as Max, he was really fun in this movie. I The twist that he was the husband definitely caught me off guard. I thought he was just gonna say like, oh I was in love with her or something like that and I was like that's gonna make sense but he was in love with her and I guess he still is in love with her but he was also married to her which I was very caught off guard by and I really really enjoyed that twist I thought he was a really nice person I liked that she he was trying to protect Norma at all costs I liked that he was sending mail to her like he was doing so much for her that she didn't even know about like he deserves a raise or like a super super raise and I loved the ending how he said he was a director and then he's directing her in the spotlight one last time I thought that was a very poetic end for his character and his character with Norma. William Holden as Joe, the main character of this movie, I thought that he was really, really good. I really liked his interactions with Norma and with Betty and with Max, and I really liked how he was kind of going through the paces of screenwriting, and he had this job that was paying him well and elaborate, but maybe wasn't providing him with happiness, and when he was with Betty, he was happy. He, he was kind of felt like this is what he wanted to do, and then he, at the end of the movie, he had to kind of decide, does he want to be happy, but maybe just be poor the rest of his life, have his car taken away? or does he want to be maybe not happy but have everything that he wants and it was a very interesting dilemma that he has and there was probably a lot more to his character the ending definitely caught me off guard for him for like Joe's decision to kind of just cut off Betty completely really kind of caught me off guard so I'd like to watch this movie again with the hindsight of what's going to happen in this movie to kind of maybe gauge his character a little bit more because I feel like I missed something with his character but overall I thought William Holden did a really good job and last but not least was Gloria Swanson and I think the person who gave the best performance in this film. She was really scary and uncanny is the word that I've used. This That is the word of this review, but uncanny is the word that I'll use for her and like just uncomfortable. Like from the moment you see her, there's this air of uncomfortableness towards her and like mystery towards her that you're like, something is off with this lady. And it's not as off as it is at the end of the movie. I like that the movie had this slow kind of build for her character. You know, she started off a little crazy and she ended up killing Joe you know like there is this there is this arc there where she kind of goes a little bit insane but I loved her character I loved how into herself she was I wanted to whack her in the face every five seconds but I also felt sympathetic for her although by the end of the movie I think that sympathy mostly went away and I was just like uncomfortable like very very uncomfortable with her character but I think that at that it's the point of this movie maybe you're not supposed to be uncomfortable but I found myself sympathetic to her at the start and like oh she's just missing her past she's she's kind of in love with her old self and she's not really in tune with her new self she thinks everyone still loves her but the world has kind of moved on and left her behind and she's just there in the dust kind of picking up the pieces without even realizing it you know I was sympathetic for her character but by the end of the movie I was I was just uncomfortable like the faces she was making and I like that at the start of the movie she's like who needs lines if you can like just act with your eyes basically and I love that she was using her eyes so much in this movie and especially after that line I was really looking at her eyes because she said that I was like okay are eyes going to be important or is, she, or is that just something like is that how she's going to act and she was using her eyes a lot and her eyes were actually displaying quite a bit of emotion quite a bit of I don't know there was some confusion especially at the end there was some confusion 
but there was also like a great deal of of happiness and there was also this kind of craziness to her eyes all at the same time and I thought it was great you know these the stare the actual stare that she had the face a little bit tilted up into the side she was just not quite there and not quite right and that was just due to the way that her face and her eyes were kind of being contorted through Gloria Swanson's great performance and yeah that is my reaction and review to Sunset Boulevard the 1950 noir drama thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful beautiful amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel it really does mean a lot uh yeah i'm gonna be watching double indemnity at some point i don't know if it's soon but i'm pretty sure it's coming within the next couple of months i'm hoping but yeah it's directed by billy wilder and that makes me really excited because he did an, inc an incredible job with this movie so i'm excited to see what he can do with another one thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time for my next movie reaction.